In this video, we're going to take a look around the various accounting screens in Brightpearl to see what they do and when to use them. There are four areas where you can access accounting features. Under the Customers menu, under the Suppliers or Vendors menu, under the Accounting menu, and under Reports. Starting off with the customer side of accounting, we've got Accounts Receivable, which is called Aged Debtors in the UK. This shows you what your customers owe you and when payment is due. There's a separate video on Accounts Receivable. Next, we've got the Customer Invoice List, which is a useful view on which invoices are still to pay and can be filtered and exported to Excel, just like all listing screens in Brightpearl. As with all lists, click on a contact name to show only rows for that contact. When you're looking at any report for just one contact, you'll also get this information box at the top with CRM, accounting, any other orders they've got open, and if you have help desk turned on, a tickets tab too. Next on the menu, we've got the Take Payment screen. This is actually just another way into the payment allocation screen for any given customer. It's often faster to find the customer first and then click the Allocate Payment link in the Accounting Mini tab, especially if you've got a lot of customer debt. Next, we've got the Quick Invoice screen. This is just used for recording a sales invoice against a customer without a sales order. You might want to use this if you're raising invoices in other software and just doing your bookkeeping in Brightpearl. In the vast majority of cases, all sales invoices will be created from Brightpearl sales orders and you won't need this screen. The Quick Credit screen is just the same as this but the other way up. Just like with sales invoices coming from sales orders, most credits will come from sales credits created from the sales system rather than using this screen. The vendor or supplier screens are pretty much identical to the customer screens. The accounts payable, which is aged creditors in the UK, shows you what you owe your suppliers. You access the payment allocation screen for a supplier using the green cash icon on the right hand side or the allocate payment link in the accounting mini tab. The supplier bill screen, which is called enter a bill, is used a lot. You'll use this when you're entering bills from suppliers where you've not placed a purchase order and when there's no need to think about inventory. Examples might be bills for rent or professional services, where the supplier has given you credit and you don't have to pay it now. Even if you do pay the bill as soon as it arrives, we recommend using this screen to record all expenses where you might want to filter by supplier. If you are paying it at the same time, you can click this box here to mark the invoice paid. If it's just a basic payment from a bank account and you don't want to record it against a particular vendor or supplier, Maybe you've just paid for some milk at the store, then use a bank payment. We'll come on to banking soon. There's an extra screen under the vendors or suppliers menu that you don't have for customers, called List Payments Made. This list is useful for exporting to your bank to instruct them to make a transfer. And here's also where the check printing process begins, if you've got that switched on on your account. By adding bank information to the contact record, you can get it to appear in here. Under the accounting menu, you've got the accounts dashboard, and then various banking features. The Expenses or Bank Payments screen is used to record money that's left your account that does not relate to a supplier bill. You might use this for interest payments, for example. The Vendor Payment list is just another way to get to the screen we saw a moment ago. When you receive money into your bank account that does not relate to a sales order or a customer, use a bank receipt. Things like tax refunds would go in here. The End of Day Cash Reconcile screen is soon to be removed from Brightpearl, so don't use it. The other screens I'm showing you in this video make it redundant. The list of bank accounts does what it says on the tin. The transfer money screen is used to record movements of money between bank accounts. When a credit card company clears funds from a number of credit card receipts, for example, you'd record a bank transfer from the credit card account to the bank account. A list of recent transfers shows on the right hand side. The Reconciliation and Import screens are used to ensure that your Brightpearl transactions agree with what the bank says. There are videos for each of these two, the Reconciliation process and the Import and Match process, that go into a lot more detail. The Bank Activity report is used to see everything that's been happening on a bank account, whether it's been matched or reconciled. And of course you can filter and export too. This screen is also used to record the transfer of funds from one account to another. Tick the values you want to transfer, you'll get a sum of all the values you've ticked, and then click to create a batch transfer. The Expenses menu option here takes you into the Personal Expenses feature. This should only be used when you've paid for things with your own personal card or cash, and need to have a formal record of the expense claim. It's typically only used by larger companies where staff submit expenses. For small businesses, it's easier to create a bank account called Director's Expenses, and simply enter bank payments. 
See the video on expenses to learn more. Under the Tasks menu, you can enter the Journal Corrections screen if you know the journal ID. However, most of the time, the Journal Corrections screen is accessed by clicking the Journal ID on the left-hand side of most of your accounting reports. Here's where you can make changes or corrections, and there's a video all about that. Use the Enter Journal screen to create new transactions for things like depreciation. If you need to make corrections, we generally recommend that you edit the original journal rather than create new ones, especially for sales and purchases where there's a contact ID. Again, the video on journals and journal corrections goes into much more detail. The Repeat Transactions screen is used to finalise any repeat bank transactions you've already set up. See the video on repeat transactions to learn all about it. The Wages wizard is going to be removed in favour of entering regular journals, so you don't need to worry about this. On the right we've got a couple of setup links, one for managing your accounting periods and another to edit the chart of accounts. They're pretty self-explanatory. The data check screen will highlight any issues you've got on your account. It's worth checking in here maybe once a week and always before you close an accounting period or reconcile a VAT or tax return. Finally, we've got the accounting reports. The common management reports are right here in the menu along with the corrections report which shows all changes made to journals using the corrections screen. There are more reports available when you click More. We've already seen a lot of these from other links in the menu. Ones we've not yet seen are the MAP Trial Balance, the Nominal Ledger Summary, the Tax Exceptions Report and the EC Sales List. Whilst it's titled EC Sales, you can use this to report on sales invoice transactions for any tax code you like. So that's a quick skim around the accounting features available in BrightPearl. Don't forget to check out all the other videos that go into much more detail on each topic.